Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio with AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is 20 causes for low indoor airflow for a furnace and for an air conditioning system. So low airflow is a big deal, and for a furnace, the furnace could overheat, and for an air conditioning system, the evaporator coil could freeze. And even if the problem wasn't that bad, but you still had a low airflow problem, you're going to have longer run times, you're going to be at a lower capacity and lower electrical efficiency, so you want to try to figure out what that problem is. One of the first causes I want to mention is a dirty indoor air filter. So we all know that we want to change these filters out so they don't get clogged up with dust, but something I want you to keep in mind is that there may be multiple filters in the building. So you want to look inside the building to make sure if there's filter return air grills, there could be a filter in each one of those. Also, there could be more than one central filter for a system. You know, there could have been some accident where the building owner didn't realize that the filter was here and they started putting the one inside of the furnace or the air handler. There could also be uh, a, a filter rack cut into a duct and there may be one here and here. And that was done by accident. This is a very overlooked cause of low airflow. And we are on the inside of an air handler cabinet. The evaporator cooler right here has been removed. But you see that this cabinet, there's glue there that typically holds this insulation. Well, a lot of times that lets go and, and then the, the blower motor ends up sucking the insulation to the side of the squirrel cage and then it lowers the amount of airflow because you're only sucking air in from this side. So what happens is though, when the blower motor shuts off, this insulation a lot of times goes back up into position, not in this case because it's horizontal, uh, but in a vertical system or a package unit or something like that a lot of times the insulation kind of moves back and you don't notice it so you got to kind of look around for loose insulation on the inside of the cabinet of the system a dirty blower wheel will affect your airflow as well and the squirrel cage itself on the inside you want to make sure to clean that out as well you want to get that as smooth as possible you don't want it to be completely rough so you want to get your brush and your shop back in there to clean that out Another cause could be that the dip switches were never set properly to the correct airflow speed. So this control board controls what speed an ECM blower motor will run at. Right here on this, there's a pin connector that needs to be adjusted for the system size. Have you ever played find the supply registers before? That's the game where you have to find where they're all at and then move all the furniture out from on top of them. And sometimes they're, they're under a couch or something like that. And sometimes you have a cat or a dog laying on them. You could have a return grill that's just too small or you may not have enough return grills and you may not have enough supply registers or they may not be the right size, so that could be an issue. Another cause could be that the filter is just too restrictive. So you could go with a less restrictive type, such as this version right here, or you could go with a pleated one that from the manufacturer it says that it has a lower pressure drop. The other thing is you could go with a, a wider pleated filter and that will be much better, such as a three inch or a four inch one, and that would have a much lower pressure drop across it. This is a secondary heat exchanger for a 90% efficient furnace, and that coil right there could get clogged up with dust and that would block the airflow. It's possible that nobody ever checked the airflow to make sure that they had the proper airflow going across the coil, and we've done several videos on that with the temporize formula, with the total external static pressure, and also with the hot wire anemometer. So you can go ahead and check those out. Those are linked in the description section below. Another common issue is if this supply flex or multiple flexes are not installed onto the collar properly, then they could just accidentally fall off over time. Maybe this is getting kicked in the attic and it gets pulled off, or maybe this is in the crawl space and there's no hanger, and it just kind of falls off due to weight over time. Then you just have the air blowing out of the duct into the crawl space. And so in the building, maybe you have one or two supply registers that don't have any airflow, but all the rest do. You're just pumping all of your air down into the crawl space. So you gotta make sure that the flex is secured properly onto the collar. You could have a clogged evaporator coil and it gets clogged with dust. And that happens when you don't have a filter on a system. And what's gonna happen is you're just not gonna have the airflow crossing this evaporator coil anymore. So this would all need to get cleaned out of here. You could have a frozen evaporator coil, but that is usually due to one of three things, either a low refrigerant charge, a liquid lamb restriction, or to begin with, you had low airflow. But obviously now with a frozen coil, you have no airflow. Check out the article that we wrote over on the website, which differentiates between the low refrigerant charge, low airflow, and liquid lamb restriction. We're looking into the inside of a rectangular duct with acoustical liner that's on the inner walls of the duct. And if you have the glue and the buttons let go, of the acoustical liners and the acoustical liner gets kind of sucked back in the return, that could block the airflow. 
So acoustical liner may have been used as insulation instead of on the outside of the duct, uh, but the acoustical liner's real use is to quiet the noise down in a short return duct. Another cause could be leaky joints in your ductwork. So you want to make sure that they're sealed up well, and even if you try to use tape, a lot of times this duct is oily and the tape won't stick very well. And a lot of times you see your insulation uh, getting blown up, like getting blown out when the system turns on. And that means that you have leaky joints. And you really want to seal those joints with duct mastic. And you can get the duct mastic in a caulk tube like this or in the tub. And I have both of them linked down in the description section below. Another cause could be that the supply and the return trunk ducts were not sized for the size system that you have. So for instance, you have to take a look at the outdoor unit model number and look at the heat removal capacity in BTUs per hour. And for every 12,000 BTUs per hour, you're looking for roughly 400 CFMs of airflow. And then you have to design your duct work to accommodate that. Just because you can make a duct fit in an area doesn't mean it's a good idea. So this is a 14 inch return flex with the insulation around it jammed into a six inch opening. So it's definitely gonna reduce the airflow. Another cause could be that you have too many 90 degree turns or too many dead ends and things like that in your duct. So whenever possible, always try to plan out for as many straight ducts as your, for your trunks as possible. Because you gotta remember that every time that you add a 90 degree turn in there, it's not just the length of that turn itself. That 90 degree turn, the actual equivalent length of adding that into the duct is like adding a significant length of straight duct to your, to your system. Another cause could be that the supply trunk duct at the end of the line got reduced too far in size. And in this case, we have a 12 inch duct. It's actually 12 by eight. And you see that we have one, two, three, four, five supplies and literally two more behind me on this same size duct. And this duct will not supply the correct amount of air volume needed for each of these supply runs. Another cause could be that an animal has made a nest in your return air flex. And this could happen in a crawl space that's not sealed up, uh, such as a mobile home, or if you leave the crawl space door open. And the next time that this system runs, basically the return flex just collapses in, and that's a lot of times what it would look like. So you gotta make sure that that crawl space is all sealed up. Another reason could be a duct that's actually on a concrete floor. And in that case, there could be water that comes up and rots the duct. I found before, where a downflow furnace is pushing the air down into, a, into its plenum and then the bottom had rotted out. And that's because where I live, the water table comes up a little bit. You know, that could happen. Or you could have an evaporator coil up here that has a problem with its condensate pan and it's dripping water into the bottom of the plenum and rotting it out, blowing all the air out of the bottom of the plenum and not into the house. So that's it. That's the 20 causes of low airflow. Make sure to check out our website where we have plenty of resources there. Join us over on Facebook and follow us there and like our page. We have quick tips happening every other day. And so we've got a lot going on with our videos, our articles, and our quick tips. Make sure to check out our refrigerant charging and service procedures for air conditioning paperback, workbook, and quick cards, which are all available over at amazon.com. And we have all those products available over at our website as well, including the ebook. And we also have the ebook available over on Google Play. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification in order to get an update anytime we post a new video. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.